Hi, this is now our final mini lecture for probability and statistics. We're going to look at how we can extend the method of maximizing our likelihood estimation uh, and how we can also use error propagation um, in our fittings. So we're going to look at um, an example of constrained least squares fitting uh, and we're going to use um, a chi squared fitting parameter uh, with error propagation to see how that can um, give more information about our fitted parameters. So we're taking an example for this. Uh, why are we doing this? Well, previously we looked at how to fit a straight line and we took a particular model which was a intercept plus a gradient and we know that there's some equations that you can use to find alpha and beta. Uh, you probably learnt those at school, you saw them before. But that's just one model, that's one particular type of model. And of course there are many different models that might be suitable for your particular data. So this is just taking uh, another similar example, um, but it's introduced. Uh, and we're taking the example of it measuring acceleration due to gravity. Um, and we're doing that because we know something about the physics of that um, and so we can infer what we think the form of the equation should be and so we're getting a proposed model based on the physics of the system we're looking at. So we have some data where an object has been dropped and we're looking at time and the velocity that the object has reached. So the model for describing this is this, that the velocity is equal to the gravitational constant multiplied by the mass of the object divided by c. c is a drag coefficient because it's falling through the air. And then there's a transient response, so it's 1 minus exponential of c divided by m times t. So this is an equation for how the object speed changes, how it increases and then starts to plateau uh, towards a terminal velocity as it's falling through the air. And this is something that you can work out from the physics of the problem, the forces due to gravity uh, and the resistance due to drag. Now because we've been able to create that model, we can linearize it by making a substitution. So let's substitute z t uh, for this part of the expression here, m divided by c, 1 minus the exponential term. Uh, what does that mean? Well for each set of data we have we can calculate what this is. We know m, we know c, we know t, and so we can calculate a new parameter z which is going to give rise to a linear response. So then when we plot v against uh, z, we should expect to get a straight line, and that straight line will have a gradient g. So by linearizing our expression, we have constructed it such that we know the form of the equation. It's a straight line, uh, and there's no intercept and that the gradient is g. So we've got a method now for estimating the gravitational constant given some known things and given our experimental data. Uh, so that's great, uh, but what we want to do is we want to um, fit our value of g to that data. Now with the method that we showed in the previous mini lecture, we can do that. And we can do it starting at this point where we have our function q which we're trying to minimize. Uh, we got to that point in the previous lecture, so the derivation up to that point is the same. Uh, previously we had the expression which was a function of alpha and beta. We were trying to minimize it with respect to alpha and beta. Now we can minimize q with respect to g. That's simpler because there's only one variable, so we have the total differential dq by dg. Uh, minimize it so that's set to be equal to naught. And so we can differentiate that term set it equal to naught, and now you can see that this is something that we can evaluate. We can sum the vi's, we can sum the zi's, and rearrange that. 
So we've got an expression for calculating the best fitting or the most likely value of G given our data and that comes out at 9.71. So that's one instance of it but of course we can now use this for any type of model that we want. Um, we call it least squares fitting and you can see why least squares fitting has generic application because we're always going to get a function of this form and so we're minimizing the sum of the errors squared. So this is our value, this is our estimate of the value, the difference between them is the error and we square the error and sum them up. So we call that least squares fitting and that's why we can use least squares fitting very generically uh, it doesn't just have to be a linear model we can create whatever sort of model you want and you still expect the least squares fitting method uh, to give rise to the best values of uh, coefficients that are in your model so there's one more trick that we're going to do uh, again we're starting at a point where we're defining our fitting parameter this is called a chi squared parameter and you'll notice it's the same as what we had before but the one difference is we've now allowed the uncertainty of each data point sigma i to be different before sigma was a constant now we've got a different uncertainty for each data point uh, that doesn't change anything else about the derivation uh, maximizing the um, probability um, is still the equivalent of minimizing this expression here. This enables us to take instances where we have individual values of uh, confidence for each data point yi. Um, it could be the case that sigma i is the same for all the data and that it is a constant but it still wouldn't change this uh, analysis that we have here. And um, the solution for what the best fitting alpha and beta is is uh, the same equations we had last time except now we've modified our summation equations such that they've got the 1 over sigma i squared term in each of them but other than that it's the same and we have the same solution as last time so alpha and beta uh, are the same equations as before we've just modified our summation equations to account for the fact that we've got a variable uh, standard deviation for our uncertainty in y so that's great so we've added a bit of um, uh, a new uh, sort of uh, feature to the fitting that we can do but uh, there's a question remains of what's our confidence in alpha and beta uh, one way we could assess the confidence in alpha and beta is to find confidence intervals like we did before when we found confidence intervals for means and variances uh, you could go about the same sort of methods to find confidence intervals for alpha and beta um, but another way is to use the propagation of errors method that we um, saw right at the beginning of our lecture series and we remember the generic equation for that an error propagated uh, through some function f is equal to the summation of the errors squared multiplied by the partial derivative of our function f squared so we're adding all these things in quadrature. Uh, now this is this is good because we uh, are interested in. Um, so how are those errors going to into our uncertainty in alpha? Well, we can do that because term uh, with respect to y i to find that. So a couple of results that we would use when we see that dsy by dyi is equal to 1 over sigma i squared, dsx by dyi is equal to xi over sigma i squared. You can check those if you want to. Uh, but with those results it's uh, simple enough to find the partial differentials of alpha and beta with respect to yi and then we can use those within our expression here to find the individual propagated error for alpha and beta and that's expressed in terms of the same summations that we had here 
So now we have a form of equation that you can use. If you want to check this out, you can work through the algebra yourself. It's um, not too difficult. Um, but we can see that the principle of propagation of errors can be applied and we can now both fit alpha and beta so we can find a best fitting linear model um, and we can see also see that we've got the way of propagating the errors to find what the uncertainty in alpha and beta is of course assuming that all of our errors are normally distributed we've done this for a linear model and all of these same principles could be applied to any model that you want so you have the uh, means now to uh, fit models to data uh, to look at the propagation of errors to find the confidence uh, or the uh, the uh, uh, uncertainty associated with the parameters that you fitted um, and you also have the statistical tests to find out whether that is a good model to the data or not with that we're wrapping up the I'm wrapping up the mini lectures um, and uh, thank you for listening over the course and uh, I hope you enjoy the final problem sheets